All right. Hi, everybody. Um, like Stefan said, my name is Jenny, and I'm a Huxley alum. Um, I have the good fortune of being able to work on Schooner Adventurous, but today I want to I want to tell you a little bit about myself first, and as many of you are students, I uh, tell you how I got to be working on Adventurous and sort of my journey uh, from uh, finding Huxley and, and beyond. So first off, I grew up near the water and was really fortunate um, when I was little to have a family beach house where we could go sailing and swimming and beach combing and uh, really, really have space to do all sorts of things. And so the marine environment and especially the Salish Sea has been a big part of who I am from age five <laughs> and probably even earlier. Um, and I did my, my best throughout school, through elementary, through high school, and then of course through college to uh, bring in marine life and everything that I could. There were so many reports on orcas and all sorts of things. There was just, just, uh, but they were a lot of fun and I continued to, to bring that love into everything that I do today. Because of my love of the marine environment and my history with sailing in my family, uh, my parents found this really cool opportunity for me when I was 12. Uh, through the Girl Scouts, we were able to go on board Adventurous uh, for a th uh, three night, four day overnight trip, leaving out of Friday Harbor. And honestly, I don't remember that much about the trip, but the couple things that I do are spectacular. I remember being on Anchor Watch and first night absolutely hating it. It was so cold. It was the middle of the night and I was, had to be out of my cold, my warm bunk for a full hour on deck. But the next night I got to have a, um, a sunrise moment and a sunrise watch. So I was sitting on deck of this historic schooner and I get to watch the sunrise, which was just epic. Um, I also had a lot of fun climbing the rigging and getting to know all the girls on board. I definitely, as a kid, struggled. We're a vegetarian ship. Um, struggled with the food on board, but my favorite was the zucchini cake. It made a huge lasting impression. <laughs> um, once I got old enough, I was able to go to uh, the Seattle Aquarium, and I was part of their volunteer program as a high schooler. Um, it was absolutely so much fun. We got to be on the floor and acting kind of as staff. Uh, the only thing that was different was the colors of our lanyards. Um, so we got to talk about the harbor seals and the orcas and all the touch tank um, types of creatures, which uh, was really, really fun because I was with all my people. I was with my science nerds, which was great. Um, then I, I went to Western here, which is great, uh, with the intention of going and getting a marine biology degree. Um, and I worked really hard in my first couple years and learned that testing is not my forte. And I really struggled with the intro um, biology and chemistry classes. Um, and unfortunately didn't make it into the biology department, which was pretty life shattering, as I'm sure any of you that are um, early on in your college career of trying to figure out what you want to do with your life, it's a little shattering when you're like, okay, well, now my plan is gone. Um, I was then um, lucky enough to be able to come over to Huxley, which we'll get back to in a second. Uh, my first two summers, um, out of co or in college, I was able to go back to the aquarium and was a youth engagement mentor. So I was basically teaching the high school volunteers how to be high school volunteers, which after being just done in that program was really cool and rewarding to be able to, to help uh, new high schoolers through their process and learning that same, these are my people and I love marine science kind of thing. So when I was really struggling with my marine biology, sort of catastrophe, I was like, what, what am I going to do? So I went over to Huxley and was talking to Kathy and for trying to figure out, OK, should I do environmental science? Should I do education? And this is something that I've been told my entire life was, Jenny, you make such a great teacher. You should be a teacher. You should teach. And I was like, stubborn me. I was like, no, I don't want to. I want to do the science. Until I realized that I really do love teaching and I really struggle to turn it off. Like on the ferry, I'm teaching somebody about the things that are out there. Um, and realizing that um, the environmental studies department was more up my alley than I realized. So I ended up getting a degree in environmental education and a minor in environmental science. So those chemistry and biology classes didn't go to waste, which was very nice. Um, but before we move forward, I want to know, what do you think environmental education is? Turn to a neighbor and talk to them about what you think environmental education is. <coughs> All right. Well, 
Uh, we are going to go forward. Here is what the EPA says environmental education is. And the key things here is that it's a process. It's not just black and white. It's a process to figure out what you are learning about the environment, where people can explore, engage, and take action, which is cool. There are lots of different uh, possibilities throughout that, um, which I really enjoyed. Um, and just like Lady said over here, that it's a way of, of discovering yourself as well. So then the um, NAAEE, the North American Association of Environmental Education, has a similar definition as well. And I like that it has the power to transform lives and society. It's not just you're sitting in a classroom. It's not just you're going on a hike. It's the two of them put together. You can make anything into environmental education. You can make anything experiential. It's that part that I think is really, really powerful. And we do in our daily lives without even realizing it. So this is what I did at Huxley and what I really, really enjoyed. And just to get an idea of, of who you all are, um, who's in a, a science major? Nice, lots of you, all those numbers. Uh, what about uh, policy or planning? or studies, nice, or other, the rest of the, of the universe, excellent. Um, so I had a great time here at Huxley with my environment, environmental education degree and went through the program called Spring Block where we get to go out into, into the world really and teach uh, high school students out on Susha Island. We taught fifth and sixth graders um, throughout Whatcom County and then we got to go on a wilderness backpacking trip and these were all in a method of showing us we can create a curriculum from scratch, take anyone anywhere and make it place-based on Susha. We created a 100-page curriculum. It was really cool. Then fifth and sixth graders, we took an existing curriculum and got to modify it to, to, be, able to, um, to be able to teach it how we would like it, but you're still going off of a, a, a lesson plan. Then the wilderness trip, as much as that just seems like a fun way to end the quarter, which it was, uh, it's also a great way to model how you would take somebody out in the wilderness. So throughout the whole thing, we were talking about risk management and how are we going to hike these many days or these many miles in a day so that we can make sure that our group stays together and stays healthy. Really, really cool program. So after that, I decided that I wanted to go have some fun. And uh, I went back to another place that I went to as a kid, uh, which was Camp River Ranch, a Girl Scout camp in Carnation, where I was able to be a trip leader which was so much fun. We got to go uh, horse packing out in the Pesaten wilderness. We went rock climbing. We went kayaking uh, and all sorts of things. There was a lot of fun way to, to bring young people into nature. Then after that, I came back to school for a little bit and uh, TA'd for spring block again. And then after I officially graduated, this was my first real job. I worked at the Boys and Girls Club in Ferndale as their teen program coordinator, which it was a really hard job. This is one of my the hardest, hardest things I've done. Just because of the, the fact that you've got students coming in after school, they have a lot of energy, and they often um, want to just hang out and be on their phones. But I didn't want that to happen, so I took them out in nature as much as I could. Um, so I was working here and sort of struggling through, is this really what I want to do? Is this what I got my degree for? wasn't quite right. I wasn't outside. I wasn't doing what I wanted to do where I was inspiring people about nature. I was maybe once a month, but that wasn't quite enough. So while I was here, I happened to see a job description um, fly by, I think probably through Kathy, um, that was for Sound Experience as their program coordinator. And the two people that just walked in are our current program coordinators. <laughs> um, so I applied and, and got the position. Uh, ooh, that's the wrong direction. There we go. Um, and got the position, position and was able to live and work aboard Schooner Adventurous for about four months, um, teaching students and people of all ages uh, all sorts of things out on the Salish Sea. So we have about 12 to 15 live aboard educators that work with us for a season. That's usually three and a half, four months. I was program coordinator for two seasons, so I lived and worked on board for eight months total. Um, I even got to do it, I did mine. July through October, and then March through July. So I got to see the Salish Sea in almost all of the seasons, not winter, that's too much, um, out on the water, which was really, really cool. And being able to take students out there 
and let them experience something that many people haven't even ex ex experienced. A lot of the people that we take out, uh, take out on the ship have never stepped foot on a boat before. They've lived here all their lives and maybe they haven't had the opportunity to go on a boat. So they get to come on board Adventurous, the 106 year old National Historic Landmark, just, just as of this winter, fully restored. We finished re replacing her deck this winter. That was a big project. She was a canoe for most of the winter instead of a sailboat. And now she's back on the water and sailing out here in Squalicum, Car Squalicum Harbor, actually, um, is where they will be until the end of this week. So, oh, and she's also Puget Sound's official environmental tall ship, which is cool, thanks to uh, Governor Inslee. When people step on board, this is, I think, uh, one of the places that you can have environmental education at its finest. Uh, it's a kinesthetic, dynamic learning platform. As soon as you step on board, your feet move a little bit, you're on a new, on, in a new space, you've got, as soon as we leave the dock, you've got the wind in your hair, the sun on your face, and you're moving, your whole body is moving, which you don't get to do that sitting here in a classroom. You can out here. Then, when people come on board, we're immediately working together to, to haul on the sails. We don't have any winches on board. This is all human powered. So we use our team of educators and our, anyone that steps on board to help us haul up those huge sails. Was it 2,000 pounds for the main sail? 1,000 pounds? It's like a car. Yeah, you're, you're, you're hauling up a car. But you're doing it together, which is really cool. Um, so we have everybody work together when they come on board. Uh, they get to help us tack or turn into the wind or jibe and turn away from the wind, and everybody gets a chance to steer. So there are, no matter if you take a specific <coughs> fact away, the fact that you're on the ship and experiencing a space like the Salish Sea uh, from a position that you may not have ever experienced before is great enough. If you want to go home and say, you know what, I got to sail on Schooner Adventurous today, which as a 12 year old is exactly what I went home and did. I told everybody about it, which is super great. And let's see, then our programs. So we have uh, programs that allow people of all ages to come on board. We have uh, public sales, uh, three hour public sales that you can come out and we have an education lesson, which is usually about plankton. We throw a net over and collect some plankton um, with our plankton net. Uh, we have dockside tours, so if those people don't want to uh, leave the dock, and in fact we now this year have a new program that Stefan uh, launched for us called Dock Talks, where we have community members come out and, and speak on board the ship. Uh, we've got a program called Sound Studies. These are three or five hour sort of snapshots. We take usually school groups, but sometimes youth groups, um, out on the ship and they get to rotate through five different stations uh, and learn about plankton, marine life, ocean acidification, living aboard a ship, um, and a handful of others. So that is a, a quick um, trip. The best thing that we do on board are overnight programs. Those are called sound explorations, and those are anywhere from three days up to seven days, sometimes 10, and we even had some college students come on board for a month at a time, which was great. This allows people to work together as a team. You're in small groups where you can uh, keep the ship clean and safe and learning throughout the whole process. It's, we often talk about adventurous having magic and that is the magic of adventurous, is the community building and the working together and going through that I can find myself process that we talked about earlier of environmental education but in a new space that allows you to experience that in a different way and hopefully then take that back to land so that you can continue to, to practice those things. Um, some other really cool programs we do are usually in the summer called Fantastic Voyage, which we have seven, uh, six days uh, of teenagers out on the boat. It's a loud boat at that, for that week, um, which is great. Um, the Girls at the Helm uh, trip is very, very um, inspiring. We kick all the guys off the boat and all of the crew are women, uh, including our captain and our mate and our engineer. And we bring on uh, students and three adult mentors. Those mentors are there to help um, inspire those young girls to, and these are girls from 12 to 13 to seniors in high school, 17, 18, um, to find act, um, careers in STEM or um, art or anything really. We've had uh, photographers come on board, we've had videographers come on board, we have um, one of our board members who's a microplastic scientist come on board every year. Lots of very cool things. 
Um, and last but not least, this is our, it's not really environmentally focused, but it, it gets along, um, or it has that undertone throughout the whole thing. It's our six day program called uh, Road Scholars. Uh, and it's where grandparents can bring their grandkids on board for six days out in the San Juans. Uh, the, the magic that you see between uh, those grandkids that maybe have never spent much time with their grandparents, let alone sleeping on a tall ship for, for six days. Um, it's very cool to see their, their bond grow and they get to meet all of the other grandparents and grandkids. It's, it's really special to watch. So I mentioned earlier, we've got a whole bunch of different science-based lessons. That's plankton, marine life, ocean acidification, and marine debris where we can, we do our best to have it be uh, focused on the space that we're in. So we're talking about the physical sailor sea, we're um, sometimes drawing on the deck and using all of the tools that we can to make it be um, not just like you're feeling sitting in a classroom. We also have more maritime skills too, uh, fo focused on navigation, nautical skills, uh, and sail theory uh, to fully round out the full experience. Uh, as well as that, we've got day-to-day -day life. Like I've mentioned a couple times, we work together to uh, clean up after meals, to take care of the ship, and just do your every morning day ch everyday chores, um, which some teenagers don't really like to do, but they, uh, they certainly bond and, and grow throughout all of that um, by the end of the trip. And the education pieces on board are, are pretty endless. Uh, we've got two citizen science focused uh, activities that are happening right now on the boat. Um, one is our microplastics collection and that's through uh, University of Washington Tacoma. So we have this net on board called the manta net, manta ray net, um, and it collects samples um, of seawater that we're hoping, probably not hoping actually, to have microplastics in it. So then we can send that sample back to University of Washington Tacoma and then it pops up on a map and so the students can go back and see if their sample in their location came up with microplastics. So we're helping to, to see what else is out there. And uh, we also have a new partnership uh, this year that is with Pacific Mammal Research, um, a small organization down in Anacortes, and they are working to photo identify harbor seals and harbor porpoises. Uh, we know hardly anything about harbor porpoises. Uh, we don't even really know like where they like to go, what they like to eat, when uh, they're sexually active, we don't know any of that. So this organization is working together to take pictures and spot harbor porpoises and harbor seals to figure out where they are. So we're hoping that through our, our sailing throughout the Salish Sea, since we do sail all throughout the Salish Sea, um, all the way down in Olympia and all the way up in Bellingham and sometimes go up to Canada as well, um, that we can help improve the sightings and knowledge of those marine mammals. So I found a way uh, through environmental education to have some time uh, and learn how I could make an impact. I really struggled with, I had that um, marine uh, biology stuff with um, the biology department, I was like, what am I gonna do? And through environmental education, I figured out that I can make an impact. And so through inspiring, educating, and empowering on Schooner Adventurous, and many other platforms as well, I just think at this point, um, Adventurous is a spectacular platform to do so, uh, to inspire all sorts of people of all ages to help protect and conserve um, our Salish Sea. So I hope that uh, my journey and hearing about Adventurous can inspire you to find your passion and figure out how you can make an impact as well. I do want to open it up for questions, but before we do that, I do want to also uh, bring up these two. Come here, you two. I know, I didn't prep you for that. <laughs> this is Emma and Sophia, um, our program coordinator and relief program coordinator, and they would love to see you down at the ship. Uh, we have public sales this weekend, or if you'd like to um, email me and uh, set up a time to go down and see the ship if you want to explore or talk about career possibilities, um, these two would be on the ship and would be happy to talk to you as well as myself.